over here. Rob, what are you doing today? Okay, we're going to make some uh, ambles today. We've had a lot of calls for our ambles. They're, um, yeah, they're best getting, getting around. So um, we don't always get a chance to make them, but we've got a small roll at the moment. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll make some ambles. All right, so what size... What size anvil are you making there? What, I mean, I take it you're about to pack a mould. Yeah, this is the uh, the large anvil. We call this one the hunchback. The hunchback. She's going seven kilos uh, when it's finished. So she gave you a hunchback. You try to pick it up by yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what we'll do first, we'll, uh, we're going to fill the cores in, and then we're going to make the cores. The cores are the inside shapes, holes, and whatnot, so, uh, but you'll see those. That's, that's what you can see in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have done it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this is your homemade mullet machine? Yeah, mullet. Yeah, mate, it's uh, something to be made out of necessity. What about what I'm doing at the moment, I'm cutting the seeds to make sure we get good compaction around the pattern. It makes a better cast. You want to just touch it right around the top, get all the little tight corners, whatever you can. And it also saves a lot of grinding and dressing later on the harder you can pack the thing. Now this is your two-part resin sand. How long do you actually have? Do you, do you have to work very quickly with this? Like how, how quick does it go off? It goes off um, depending on the heat of the day. If it gets too hot, it goes off in 10 minutes. It gets too cold, it can take half an hour. So it depends on the weather. Yeah. But, um, it takes like 20 minutes on average for it to go off. And then it goes hard like a concrete. Um, we only get the one use out of it off. We actually use it twice. This is our recycled sand that we're using today. So this is why we went through our system once. It's just good for the environment. Right, what do you got here, Rob? Um, this is a isomol paint. It's a clay and sand based paint. It's a little bit different to the normal house paint, obviously. It's heat rated to about 15, 1600 degrees. Um, and what it does, it just makes a nice finish on the casting. Um, and it just makes the sand sort of stand up to the metal a bit better. This is a um, a steel anvil we're making um, and the temperature for the steel anvil is really up there so we try to make the sand um, as strong as possible to cope with that uh, temperature. Um, so the first coat I'll brush on and to get the, a nice finish the last the second coat I'll, I'll um, spray it and that'll just take all the brush marks out or anything like that you know. Mm -hmm. um, and what a good thing to do is to let the sand of the paint soak into the sand. Um, of course, the sand is still reasonably porous, but you know we have compacted it pretty well. Um, any sort of porous sand, the metal will burn into, and it create a rough finish on the casting. So, um, what we'll do is um, give it a nice coat, a nice heavy coat of paint. And then after that, we'll give it a spray, and then we'll put some cores in, and uh, we'll, then we can close the mould and pour some metal into it. It's a pretty simple um, process. It's just a little bit time-consuming and a little bit of know-how. So. And now you can actually see the shape of the uh, 
the casting come out in the sand now with a bit of different coloured paint. Bit of contrast there. Yeah. And you see the beautiful finish. And our sand does that. We have a real fine sand that makes a beautiful finish on our castings. And that's what we, what we are. We, we compete with the world on, on our products, so they've got to be good. And Australian made is good. It's good to see Australian made slowly coming back. People are buying more Australian made, especially the bigger companies. So, a better quality product, less waste. which is better for the environment. So, that's basically the first coat on it. I probably missed a little bit here or there. Um, but, um, what, Are you gonna dry that? Gonna do, I'm gonna dry oh, I'll get a slow mo that. We do that is, um, it dries the All right, so just before you do it, do you just wanna explain to, to people uh, how you do it? Because we're not gonna get that on the video. Oh, I missed it. it. But it doesn't affect the paint. Um, and you'll see it, we'll, we'll show you how we do it. So it was literally the smallest spark that lit that up. I mean, that's going to take about 30 seconds to dry. So why does that burn so well? That's a solvent-based paint, not a water-based paint? Yeah, it's a uh, methylated spirit-based paint. Um, and the reason it doesn't affect the paint, because basically it's clay, Zircon sand and basic earthing materials like that. And a lot of people get confused about boundaries. They think, oh, they're the most disastrous thing, but they're actually not. Um, we use a lot of earthy products because basically we have to. Um, you can't use plastic to make molds, the metal will destroy it. So um, but hopefully we can um, solve a lot of those confusions or uh, problems that people think there is. So uh, that, that's, that's just drying off now, it's just about out. And then once it goes out, we'll, we'll just give it a light rub of our hands and smooth all the little lumps off and we'll spray it. Well, what we're going to do now is just go over with your glove um, and just rub all the lumps and bumps off. Um, you'll feel them on your glove um, and these sort of things and they, and they come off really easy too it's a very quick light sand with your hand now we've got to start putting the cores in um, this is the square hole um, that'll go in like that so that sort of fits alright goes in both ways that's no worries so that's ready for paint now this is the small round hole at the back of the anvil. This, the, this core box is a common core. We use it for a couple of different jobs. So this is longer to suit a different job, but we also use it here. So what we do, we sort of get a bit of a distance there and then we can, using our little filter, we can just rub it off. Pretty simple. A little bit more. And you don't have to rush this bit if you're putting cores in there because you really want to, to fit the other side. Just about there now. And remember, if you rub too much off, you sort of, you're going to make another one. So it's better to go a bit slower to start off with. Oh, we're so close. And there we go, we're just about there. That's down and home. And that'll make the round hole in the back of the anvil. Okay, so that one's ready for paint. And now we'll do the other two sides. Um, that just needs a little bit. Now what are you actually using there? What's this, your sanding block? 
this is actually a filter we use to pour metal through. This is actually for stainless steel. And we just find them so useful for rubbing cores down and, and it's a lot better than sandpaper. They're, they're a ceramic, um, but they're just so handy. We do use them as fillers, obviously, but um, we have one at the closing bench to um, just to, to do these little jobs. And you'll see how quickly it rubs. This sand is quite hard, so to do it with sandpaper is a bit of a bit of an effort. Okay, that one's in. That's the base hole for the anvil to be bolted down with. And what we'll do, once we paint those, you'll get a bit of visual of that. But I'll do the next one. Pretty much the same. I don't know how it first goes. So what we'll do, we'll get them. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go over to the. Um, So why the dipping? Is it just because it eliminates handling? Does it give you a better even coat? Right. Do you want a thicker coat on your cores to it make sure you get them out nice and clean coat. and smooth? Um, dipping cores or, or dipping or. your moulds into this paint, you'll get the best finish. The second best finish is the overcore system. Um, and we'll show that on smaller jobs at another period. But just to dip them as well, it's a big time saver. Like that, that core now is painted. I don't have to give it a second coat or anything now, that's fine. So um, that's just a, if I brush it, I have to give it two coats for, for steel. Because I dip it, perfect finish, the paint will absorb in and um, we'll get a nice casting. And that's what it's about, getting a, a beautiful solid casting. So you have a nice finish on the outside and the casting is solid all the way through, no holes, no, no slag and no impurities. And that's, that's what makes a good foundry. So um, that's the claws, they're, they're painted. The next process, we'll blow this out and we'll spray it. And then we'll glue the claws in. And you'll see that. Awesome. Right.